Let's take a look at practice quiz number 12 on solving and graphing rationals. Number one says to solve the following rational equation. This is the type one rational equation where we're able to go ahead and cross multiply to solve this one. So I'm gonna say two times x plus three is equal to four times seven x. Then I'm gonna distribute the two, so I get two x plus six equals 28 x, because that's four times seven x. And then I need to combine my x's, so I'm gonna subtract two x from both sides, and I get six equals 26 x. And then I'm gonna divide by 26 to get x by itself. And then I can just reduce that by dividing each one of those by two. So I would get three over 13 for my x. You just wanna check and make sure that that would not be a restricted value for x. And it's not because seven times x would be restricted if x equals zero, and this is not zero. And then negative three would be restricted because negative three plus three would equal zero. But again, that's not what we got for our value. So we're good. For number two, we're gonna solve the following rational equation, but this type cannot just be cross multiplied. We've got to get a like denominator, and then we can cancel them all out, is what I would do. So I'm gonna make them all become six x squared. So I'm gonna go ahead and write that down then work on each one. So one already has six x squared for the denominator. The second one I have to multiply by three x to get six x squared. So I'm gonna bring down one times three x is three x for my new numerator. And then in the last fraction I have to multiply by two, so that'd be 14. Once you get them to all match, then you can take them all away and solve what's left. So I have one equals three x plus 14. Then I'm gonna just subtract 14, and I get negative 13 equals three x, and then I just need to divide by three. So I get x equals negative 13 over three. Again, you just wanna make sure that would not be restricted. So x cannot be zero for each one of these would just be the only thing that's restricted for this equation. And that's not what I got for x, so my solution should be fine. For number three, it says Mary can paint a certain room in four hours, but Kendra needs five hours to paint the same room. How long does it take them to paint the room if they work together? So let's say Mary can paint one room in four hours. So one room, four hours would be Mary. Kendra needs five hours to paint one room. So we put one over five and we're looking for how long it takes them to work together. So that'd be one room in X amount of time. You can do a couple things here. You can either Go ahead and combine these two fractions with a common denominator and then cross multiply, or you can get a like denominator for everything and cancel it out. So what I'm gonna do is get a common denominator just for this side. So I'm gonna multiply 1 fourth by five and 1 fifth by four. So I get five over 20 plus four over 20 equals one over X. And then I can add these together. So I get nine over 20 equals one over X. And then I'm able to go ahead and cross multiply. So I get nine X equals 20 and then divide by nine. So X equals 20 over nine would be my solution. Now that's not a normal number we talk about with time. So let's, let's make that look a little better. So let me grab my calculator and I'm gonna type in 20 over nine and get a decimal and then interpret that as time. So let's say 20 divided by nine is 2.2 repeating. All right, so 2.2 repeating would be two hours. And then what you've got to do is take the 0.2 repeating and multiply that by 60 minutes to get how many minutes it would be. So I'm gonna say 0.2 and carry it out a little ways times 60, which gives me 13. So about two hours and 13 minutes. And I'm gonna go ahead and round it just to those minutes. I'm not gonna worry about seconds. Okay, so now that I have my calculator pulled up, we can actually start on the graphing ones. So number four says graph the function and identify the key features of the graph. What I would do first with this one is factor everything out to see if I'm gonna have any holes in the graph because that's where those come from. So X minus one, I can't factor any further. And for the trinomial at the bottom, I've got to figure out what could multiply to give me negative six and add to give me negative one. And that would be negative three 
and 2. So I'm going to put x minus 3, x plus 2 are the factors for the denominator. Now I see that no factors cancel out. So I'm going to go ahead and down here and write no holes in my graph. The x-intercepts and y-intercepts I'll find when I type it in. And the vertical asymptotes come from the denominator. So I look and see where would these be restricted. And those are going to create my vertical asymptotes. So x would equal 3 because x can't equal 3. That's where a vertical asymptote is created. And then also x can't equal negative 2. So x equals negative 2 is therefore a vertical asymptote. And the horizontal asymptote comes from the degree of the numerator compared to the denominator. So I see I have a higher degree at the bottom in my denominator. So I'm going to say that creates a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. All right, so let's go ahead and type it in, and we'll find the intercepts and just check and make sure everything looks nice and put it on our graph. Okay. So let's see, I've got a y-intercept at 0 0.167, so let me put that there, 0.167, and then I have an x-intercept at 1, 0. All right, so I've got those, and then I can check and make sure that my asymptotes look correct. So x equals 3 was one that I had already decided on, and x equals negative 2 was the other one I found and then y equals 0 is the horizontal so you can type all of those in and just make sure they look like they line right up with the graph but they won't have it cross over the graph okay so let's sketch everything I've got vertical asymptotes at 3 and negative 2 so at 3 I draw an imaginary vertical line and at negative 2 I need to do the same thing and then I had a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0, which is just the x-axis. I also know I have some intercepts I could plot. So I could plot 1, 0 for the x-intercept, and then it was not quite to 1 for the y-intercept. And that branch looks like that. And... I had another branch over here, and then the third branch was over here, and there were no holes in the graph. All right, so I've got everything I need for number four taken care of. There's a good view of it again. And then number five says graph the function and identify the key features of the graph. Well, this one is written in general form, so I'm actually able to pick some things out just by looking at it. So the vertical asymptote is tied to the left or right transformation. And I can see that this x plus 2 would make it go left 2, which would make the vertical asymptote at x equals negative 2. So I'm going to go ahead and sketch that. At x equals negative 2, there's a vertical asymptote. Then the minus 5 for the k value would make it go down 5. So my graph is going to shift down 5 which means my horizontal asymptote is going to be located at y equals negative 5. So I'm going to go there, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 down, and sketch it just like that. I see I have a negative, which means it's going to reflect over the x-axis. So I'm just going to write that out. And it's a 3, which means it has a vertical stretch of 3 or by a factor of 3. So let's just write all that out. And it's hard to see the vertical stretch by a factor of 3, but we can see that normally our branches would be here in the sort of first and fourth first and third sort of like a quadrant but not really. But now that it reflected over the x axis, it's going to end up in the second and the fourth little area of my asymptotes. And we can also type it in to figure out x-intercept or y-intercept and just check everything. So let's type it in negative 3 over x plus 2. So make sure all of the x plus 2 is in the denominator. And then minus 5. So all of that looks nice. And I can even type everything in. So x equals negative 2, 
looks good, lines up with my graph. Y equals negative 5 also looks nice, lines up with my graph. And then I just need the x-intercept. Just make sure you're clicking on the right line there or like turn those off for just a minute. So the x-intercept is negative 2.6. I think I used purple. Let me try that. Negative 2.6. And then the y-intercept was 0, negative 6.5. Okay, so that would be it for number five. So there's my graph. No holes were found in the graph because we didn't have any information that would indicate that we would have something cancel out. All right, so that's it for practice quiz number 12.